Extracts from Sabine at 18 by A.L. Don French, read by Melissa Sherebin James. Two hours later, the couple stood to leave, and Alexander knew something was wrong. She stumbled. Pina didn't stumble. David escorted her out, but something bordered Alexander. He remained with his friends, but as time crept by, he became more and more uncomfortable. Eventually, after a few minutes more, he paid his bill, sauntered out, and headed for the parking lot. That is when he thought he heard a faint voice say no. He stopped. Had he heard correctly? But then the music was so loud, and there was nothing further, so he continued on his way. Maybe he misheard. After all, no one else seemed to hear. Closer to the isolated parking area, he heard stop. He had heard a voice, but from where? He looked around and saw nothing. He did a 360 turn where he stood, yet he saw nothing. The place was empty. He was the only one there. He continued to his car, and as he rounded the corner, he saw the horror unfolding. A woman was in a losing battle as she feebly tried to fend a man off her. Again, he heard no. The parking lot wasn't well lit, and he was on edge. He couldn't see who the people were, but the actions were clear. A rape was about to unfold. The man was already climbing on top of his victim. He was so busy with one hand fishing in his pants for his weapon of assault while he pressed with the other that he never heard Alexander's approach. He moved in swiftly on the two people and in one swift motion he hauled the man off the woman, swung the attacker around and landed a punch that knocked him out. That taken care of, Alexander turned his attention to the victim. Her shirt was torn. So was her bra exposing the woman's breast, and her pants with her panty were already down her legs. He pulled the victim up, but she was in no condition to stay upright, and she collapsed against him, and he caught her. He propped her up to see her face. Peanut? But she was now too drugged to answer him. She slumped over again. He carried her to his car placed her on the back seat and locked her in. He turned to David with a rage burning within him and it needed an outlet. Ten years he had watched over Peanut, his first crush, his first love. He strode across the space, each step accompanied by a thought. He had to accept that she didn't love him in the way he loved her. He had to accept that all she wanted was to be friends. He had to accept she was going away and that they may never meet again. He had to accept her interest in other guys. He had to accept that she wanted David and not him. And what did this piece of shit try to do? Nothing except try to rape her. There was only so much a man could take. And this night, Alexander's cup runneth over, and the other teen was in his crosses. There was no escaping. There would be no mercy. David was beginning to recover from the unexpected punch when Alexander grabbed him by his shirt, dragged him up like some ragdoll, tearing his collar in the process. The sound of cloth ripping echoed in the parking lot. He went temporarily insane and launched his attack. There were maybe two women who could have controlled, maybe even stopped him that night. One was his mother, the other was Peanut, and neither were there. This time, David was prepared. He blocked and hit back. Alexander ducked and landed his punch square in the stomach of his opponent, knocking the wind out of him. David doubled over, and Alexander pounced. He used David as his personal punching bag and unleashed a wave of pent-up violence. He sat on him and un alternated with the punches, left, right, left, right, left, right. There seemed to be no satisfying Alexander's fury. David's cheekbone buckled under the punches, and Alexander's knuckles were raw. 
the blood and sweat from both boys ran unchecked and puddled everywhere. Finally, Alexander stopped. The, the bloodlust diminished. He stood and stared horrified at what he had done, but he was not sorry. As far as he was concerned, the son of a bitch deserved all that he had gotten. He stood, his hands tangling at his sides. David groaned. I dare you to report this, Alexander said. He kneeled to make sure he was heard. Keep your mouth shut on this and I'll not report that you're a damned rapist. You open your mouth just once and I'll have you killed. Don't think I can't or I won't. David stared at him through his one partially open eye. Are we clear? Alexander demanded. Yes, blood tripped as David agreed. I need a doctor. You have a cell phone, use it. And he left the defeated man on the ground. You have been listening to an extract from Sabine at 18 by A.L. Dawn French, read by Melissa Sherubin-James. All 